Okay. So um, this is another sculpture forum. And uh, we've been to see an exhibition of the work of Tony Cragg at Marianne Goodman's gallery um, in New York. And I am uh, once again with the good Jock Ireland and the good Brant Junso. And this whole thing is being supervised and managed, uh, filmed and uh, edited and posted by the amazing Rachel Bolander. Thank you, Rachel. So um, Tony Cragg is a, is a British sculptor, lives and works in Germany, um, is enormously successful, uh, a prolific, uh, inventive, um, and uh, th this exhibition is, a, 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 I didn't count the work, but it is a large exhibition uh, occupying uh, several rooms at, uh, at uh, Marion Goodman's gallery, um, with with you know a, a range of works, um, uh, which you know on the one hand are absolutely stunning, um, um, but 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 maybe there's more to be said uh, about them. Um, I, for me. Uh, for me, there's something highly problematic about, 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 I mean, I just think this show, uh, which is, is, you know, is a very, very impressive show. Um, it touches on uh, issues that we keep coming up against when we go to look at and talk about the work of the, you know, the, the, the sculptors who, who have, as it were, made it. Uh, you know, who are extremely successful on the international stage. Um, and and uh, I don't want to kind of dwell on those issues. They are issues of, um, you know, commercial uh, entanglement uh, and, and the money that's involved in the, in the art world these days. Um, I do want to try and talk about the work, but um, I, and I have something to say, but I, I, I would like to get other people involved before I, you know, make a fool of myself here. Brand Jock, please. You know, Garth, I'm not sure that we should uh, shrink from the issues that come with this kind of material success because uh, it, it, it's stuck in our faces. I mean, it's a real, it's a real demonstration of, uh, you know, kind of entrepreneurial prowess. To have more than one piece and more than one expensively rendered material. I mean, that means that they're, uh, you know, kind of on offer. It's a the gallery is a marketplace. It's not a marketplace of ideas. It's a it's a goddamn marketplace. And the things are also made in numerous ways and finish and material and size and shape to be uh, ingratiating. You know, they have kind of all the uh, physical characteristics, that, you know, the, the, the pedestal format and the precious materials and high finish, et cetera, of of um, you know the highest end decorative sculpture of of uh, you know the nineteenth century and centuries gone by, they're really kind of like uh, I mean it's like it's bling stuff. It's in your face, finger in the eye, uh, blingishness, and it's it's not easy to find. The raison d'etre in, in uh, you know, anything emotional or intellectual in these things. So that leaves them, um, you know, a, as a serious uh, 
challenge to one's feelings about feelings, I, ideas and understanding of, of the market and the purpose of um, visual art. Yeah, I I concur with all of that, and 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 um, uh, this is what happens to 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 many artists, and this is what happens. I mean, it seems to me that that it's where they go when when artists, visual artists, particularly sculptors, um, are vulnerable when they become really successful uh, on an international stage. There is a tremendous demand for their work. Um, and and uh, um, they begin to have an audience. Uh, and clientele. Uh, well, an audience, I mean, in the sense, you see, my experience of, of, of this work is to be on the one hand intimidated. Um, that's a word uh, from Peter Venn, who some viewers met uh, a while ago when we discussed Jed Pearl's book, but I saw an exhibition of Tony Craig's work with Peter some years ago now. And afterwards, Peter said, you know, one of the sensations he had was of being intimidated by it. Um, uh, I, I, you know, as a member of an audience, I am one of, you know, a crowd. I'm not, a, I'm not an individual. I'm not, so I'm not, I don't feel the, the way I, I want to feel when I'm engaging a, you know, somebody's work. Uh, I, I don't feel like a viewer. I don't feel like I am myself viewing it. I feel like I am I am one of many. And I'm not an individual. I'm taken for granted in some way. Uh, there is something about the work which assumes uh, something about who is looking at it. Um, yeah, I think that's perceptive. It, it doesn't address anyone. Well, it addresses everyone. Um, you know, the the the. Uh, I mean, I think it's. A fun, I mean, Tony is is wonderfully inventive, amazingly kind of creative in this sense. Except from the very beginning, I think he was always addressing an audience. He didn't wait to, to achieve great success, and perhaps. Secret or one of the reasons he has such success is that he has, I think, from the very beginning, you know, uh, had a sense that he was, he was making public work. He was addressing an audience. There was a, there, there was an expectation of people seeing it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I, it, it's very different from being uh, my sense of being an artist, which does not does not entail uh, anticipation, uh, you know, of, of the reception of the work, at least not in a, in a, in a sense that is uh, public in this way. Doc, you've been very quiet. Uh, and, well, I, I'm agreeing with everything uh, that's been said. I, uh, he, Tony has three pieces in a brand new building that is very close to Grand Central Station. I went through Grand Central Station yesterday on my way to visit my sister for Thanksgiving. And, uh, and I saw these three pieces uh, in the lobby of a brand new glass walled uh, building and uh, and and they look very nice uh, it um, uh, and the lobby of the building is right next to uh, a Vanderbilt Street Vanderbilt 
uh, street or way or plaza now. I, I, it's no longer a street. It's got a bunch of uh, sort of trees that are lit now. They've got Christmas lights on them. And the sculpture, the three pieces that are sort of interchangeable uh, in the lobby, I don't, they might all be the same. I didn't look carefully enough. Uh, but they, they're, the, the sculptures inside the building are, have the same impact as these trees on Vanderbilt Street or, uh, you know, outside. And they're nice, decorative, uh, uh, shiny. They work with the glass. It, uh, in a way, they're flawless. Uh, and, and that flawlessness is sort of interesting to me. Yeah. But they're also empty uh, and just not challenging in any way at all. Uh, and uh, and that is uh, obviously disappointing to me. We were talking about Jillian Jagger the other day, whose work is now in a bunch of barns out in the uh, upstate New York, uh, not available uh, for many people to see anyway. And that sense in which she uh, sort of didn't find a place or didn't want to find a place in the art world or whatever, wherever Tony has found his place. It, that's interesting to me that, and, and, you know, Jillian offers me substance um, and Tony's work is just, as I say, empty. What is it? It, Jillian's, uh, Jillian's work is out in the world. I mean, in a literal sense, it's it's not visible to many people, but it's interacting with the world every every morning of every day, like like we are. It's the wind blows, the leaves fall, it gets yeah, sure. on. Yeah. And these things come from nowhere. They're untouched by human hands, and they will forever be that. Well, yeah, that that that's that's not entirely true, is it? I mean, they are. Uh, um, I mean, we're talking about them. Um, I, I, yeah, I think what you're referring to is the sense in which these works, um, these these works in particular, I think, are, are, are um, seem to me to, to be out of reach. Um, th th there's a sense in which they become unreal. Uh, and 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 I think that that you know for, for people who will be drawn to them, uh, it is that kind of unrealness that will draw them. That because in a sense, there's the kind of magic involved of these things having come into being, as you said, untouched by human hand and uh, and almost. Um, you know, without any kind of evidence of struggle or or difficulty, I did not in 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 this work feel that you know um, uh, my ideas about anything were being were being uh, drawn into a discussion. Um, not not really my ideas about the world, about sculpture, about being an artist, about. It all was somehow other another remove. Um, uh, it's, you know, I don't have any sense of why he wants it to it. Well, it meaning a lot of things for it to be all over and done before anyone walks in the room. That there is no second thought. There's no uh, alternative. There's no. Uh, you know, nothing canceled, nothing erased. Um, it, it gives them a kind of an un, uncritical quality, a, you know, a monolithic, um, you know, tautological take it or leave it quality. And they have a kind of like a closure and a polished of a well-shaped consumer good, which is also, um, you know, untouched by human hands. 
I just, I don't, I don't know why someone wants that. I don't know why the clientele wants that. I don't know why he wants it. And well, it's because it's inoffensive. You know, you can put that in the lobby of your building and you won't get, and nobody will be offended. It, 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 um, you know, no protest, no, it, you know, mm -hmm. except from me or from us. Uh, it, 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 you know, I'll, it, there's is this flawless element, but there's also just a dumbness. A, a student doing that kind of thing um, would, you, you know, mm. be discussed in a crit, not positively. Uh, and, and it, it, you know, Tony went to school uh, and I, I think he's been a, you know, teacher or ran a whole art school in Germany or something. But this, it, and maybe this is sort of typical of most art schools now, but, uh, but those, <laughs> those figure like torso, whatever, things are just, you know, full of bad moves. And those squiggly things are, uh, it, you know, it's evading any responsibility. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, the, the, the issue of um, uh, work being made by other people, which is again, you know, what happens when you when you need to produce, uh, you know, a lot of work in, in in sometimes in very like this in very expensive materials or, you know, I mean, that in itself is is you know is an issue which 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 I can't simply condemn the work because you know there's no trace of a human hand um uh it, 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 there is something else going on that is that is my problem um uh, and and uh as i say i think it has to do with this sense of the work being but i mean it, it the work offers itself as 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 the product of a supreme master Mm. And 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 in a sense, um, that th this is partly it, it it's, it's it's intimidating in that sense. I mean, who could ever who could ever do this? You know, um, well, you know, Tony Crank can do it. He's managing a career, a, a spectacular career, very well. I mean, in, in terms of of um, you know. Um, Continuing to to be inventive, continuing to make use of uh, all kinds of techniques and 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 processes, um, you know, it it, it 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 it's remarkable. It is truly remarkable. I think what he has achieved, um, I, I, and and I think you know the, the issue is what has been lost for me, um, what has had to be given up. Um, Uh, but but for me, what's been lost is a kind of um, an actual um, sense that the artist, the author of the work, in a process of e exploration and discovery, um, that the artist, you know, is in some way uh, like me, uh, a flawed, fumbling human being trying to... Uh, you know, f give meaning to some form. Yeah, yeah. And, and With, without which it's just uh, stone and bronze and portan, um, just as it was before it got to the mill or the foundry. But when, when we, you know, we speak kind of loosely about being untouched by human hands, the, the, the real issue is not the, you know, the kind of unblemished quality or the, the it's the, the feeling that you mentioned that um, that they're not arrived at, it's a it's a pat kind of a thing. The things don't have a kind of a 
an internal intended independent life of their own that, that I'm speaking of the pieces on pedestals now um, that asserts itself down to the ground. Many of the pieces on pedestals are truncated at the base. So it's it, the suggestion being that they have no they have no way of their own of sitting in the world. Um, you know the, the sort of brush stokey looking fifties looking pieces. Of course, a different thing, but um, but those those digitally rotated numerical um, chunks on pedestals uh, have a kind of a, an arbitrary relationship to the world that we inhabit. They're just cut off at a convenient point to sit at a convenient height. Yeah, well, that 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 that's that's, that's, that's consistent with with all of the work in the sense of the where is where is gravity? What happened to gravity? Those kind of floppy eared pieces have a funny relationship to the sculpture of the 50s. I feel like it's uh, it's not quite wry, it's not quite direct, it's not critical, and yet, I mean, they look like uh, the work of numerous 50s artists who were making, you know, what they called sentinels or personages or totems. It seems like the exercise is a about kind of eviscerating whatever psychic content was once there. I mean, they also have this, this clear uh, echo of um, Noguchi's uh, 50s stone pieces, the, the perforated and um, kind of jigsaw intersecting standing pieces. But the only relationship I can see between these objects and time and history and humanity is a kind of project of um, wiping away the content of, you know, the art of the past 50 years and, and centuries. Well, I mean, that on the one hand, yes. On the other hand, it's let's do it over and do it better. It might be, the, the, you know, the, the the way to kind of uh, imagine it could be thought um, about. Uh, right. You know, uh, you know do, do, do it do it again, but, but this time, you know, make it uh, without the struggle and the difficulty and the clumsiness and the you know the flawedness of the earlier versions just do it yeah so maybe... but I, I brant was saying something about content there and it it's really it's doing away with content and it's content that can offend people it's content that demands thinking uh and and that's and it it uh you know i the start i think or at least it's my fantasy that there was a little bit of a self-portrait in uh, Tony's early work. It, it, he had actual figure, or he, recognizable figures were uh, made out of bits of plastic bottles that were taped or tacked to a, a wall. And th th I saw those figures as self-portraits of some kind. But it, he quickly sort of stopped doing that, and uh, and you know that was the end for me. Uh, it, it, disengaging completely from any kind of content. Yeah, I I I don't, I, I can't go there, but I don't. I mean, I you know the bottom line for me is that I am left. You know, feeling 
having been to this show feeling that that I, you know it's it's not addressed to me as an individual it's addressed to me as one of a group an audience um uh and and uh it, to that in that degree i become in a sense what i feel the work is i become a commodity the work anticipates my response. The work anticipates that I will be, oh, look at that. Whoa, that's horrific, isn't it? Whoa, how could somebody do that? That is incredible. It's beautiful. Look at that. You know, a predictable response. Um, I, I, I'm annoyed by it, you know. I'm annoyed by that way in which my response is somehow that assumed, taken for granted, in that sense, the work is manipulative, um, mm. and that's 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 the worst thing I can say about it. And I I hate to say that because um, you know, and um, this is the work of somebody who is enormously successful. It's it we keep coming up against this the means of exchange between between what one does in the studio and what how it can find a way into the world and that it needs to participate in the means of exchange that exist um, and uh, this work this work does that uh, very fully you know as far as that uh that human hands thing goes and the kind of indulgence that comes with this kind of career you'd make a lot of the same objections to some work of Bernini and uh, they hold, you know, the, the workshop Bernini's are, you know, weak in the same ways that 21st century workshop sculpture is. And the, the disappointment is similar. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think, I think, uh, I, I think a lot of what Henry Moore produced is, is kind of vacuous. Yeah. Sadly. And, sorry? Sadly. Uh, yeah. Uh, sadly. And a lot of what he produced and, 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 uh, um, you know, it, it, it became, uh, simply a style, a, a brand. And I think Tony has struggled to avoid that, uh, you know, to avoid becoming that kind of uh, recognizable, um, uh, uh, producing that recognizable product by being, by being continually inventive and 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 trying new things. You know, that's the the the, the, the issue, isn't it? I mean, how do you survive as a successful artist? Yeah. Well, it, 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 it's. I, I'm reading Andrew Forge on his book on Degas, and Degas figured out the way, and 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 it's it's a challenge, uh, but carrying on is a challenge, and faking <laughs> carrying on, which is what uh, Tony Craig does, and and Bernini and Henry Moore don't do. Bernini and Henry Moore and and Jillian Jagger fail, you, you know, a lot, uh, but they also manage to carry on. I don't see a connection uh, between Bernini and and uh, Tony Craig. You don't? No. Hmm. Uh, there, there's passion in Bernini that just isn't oh yeah sure. yeah in in the models and the in the the ideas and the intentions yeah, then, yeah. and then where are the models where are the ideas begins. where are the intentions in tony craig yeah no i have the sense that the the art would be diminished or embarrassed by them if there were any visible process whatsoever Somebody say something. I think we should finish, maybe. <laughs> wow. 
Are we still recording? I hope not. Uh, hold on. Before anybody says anything else. <laughs> okay.